Hello and welcome to week 27 of Bits and Bobs, where we outline this week's best mods. If you've ever taken a look at the vanilla orcish equipment and thought it looks way too ordinary and plain for the strongest and bravest warriors of Tamriel, you may like this next mod. Orcish Armor Black Rock and Roll 2 takes the orcish set and transforms it into something that you'd expect to see from a race that has generations of smithing experience. The aim of the mod is to fix the vanilla orcish set and turn it into a fearsome but law friendly new set. The armor set includes your normal pieces, gauntlets, boots, helm and armor, but includes a new banner that the mod creator has added to the set, and we think the banner adds a new level of depth to the new set. We like the new look of the armor set, and it's great to have an alternative to the vanilla set which is one of the more plain sets out there, plus more choice is always a good thing. And for today's second mod we have Supreme and Volumetric Fog. The mod tweaks the foggy weathers by making fog fill more of the area around you, so essentially it makes them more foggy. So as you can see in the video as we switch from old to new, the fog is much thicker and you can see much less in the distance. And it also does wonders when you're being chased through an already thick forest and several layers of fog suddenly blocks your vision. On the video now you're seeing the difference again with and without the mod, and as you can see without the mod you can continually walk and the fog barely limits your vision, and you can see just as far back as you always could. But with the mud installed, as you walk through the layers of fog, they actually cover what's behind you until eventually you can't even see where you just came from. The mud also recently added mists over the docks from 4am to 7am across certain cities, including Solitude, Riften, Windhelm and Dawnstar. The mud will also be compatible with all the other environmental mods like Climates of Tamriel, but you'll need to place this at the bottom of your load order. And overall, we think the author has done a great job of giving fog more of a presence in the game. And our next mod this week is Mercurio, Mystic Mayhem. The mod is a replacer for Mercurio, a magical follower that you'll find in the Bee and Barb in Riften. The mod edits his face to give him a new, more stylish look. Some of the changes that have been put into place include light and skin, grey eyes instead of the old amber eyes, new imperial face paint, changed nose and jawline, a trimmed and styled beard and completely new hairstyle. To achieve the look you're seeing in the video you'll need to install better males by Chris57, HQ beards, improved eyes and Apache sky hair, the main pack as well as the male standalone pack. Mark Uriel's hair can be different colours depending on what ENB you have installed or what kind of light he's standing in. At times it can look very dark and almost black, but in bright light it can appear almost blonde. This is the mod creator's first mod and we think it's a good one. Mark Uriel definitely looks better with this mod install compared to his vanilla counterpart. And now we have viable paintings and pictures. The mod adds a new art gallery which just opened outside of Solitude. And inside the art gallery you'll find the place decorated with a variety of new paintings. You'll also find an artist selling her paintings and a new carpentry bench. Getting your hands on your own paintings is simple. You craft a frame using the carpentry bench and then you buy paintings from the artist. Paintings and frames have been broken into three different classes, lower, middle and higher. The higher the class, the more expensive the frame and painting, but arguably they also look better. Once you have a frame and painting that'll fit, you need to equip the frame and then use it like a spell while aiming at a flat surface. Once it's on the wall, you need to equip the painting and then click on the frame to add the painting. So the process is quite simple, however it can be a little tedious to get the frame to be exactly where you want it to be, but if you do mess up then you can quickly just click on the frame to retrieve it. And overall it's a simple mod that will work well with a variety of different home mods, and the way the author chose to integrate the mod was well thought out, and we can't wait to see how the author plans to expand. And next up we've got a new weapon mod called the Ivory Blade. The mod adds a new one handed sword to the game that's been made using ivory. The weapon is craftable at any forge, but before you can craft it you'll need to find a book that'll teach you a spell called the Ivory Knowledge Spell. You can find it in Blackreach. You'll also need the Arcane Smithing Perk to be able to craft it. The sword shares its stats with its Daedric equivalent, so it's definitely a higher level sword. The mod creator has said that he may be completing the Ivory Weapon set by adding a bow, dagger, axes and hopefully every type of weapon available. And if they're all up to this same high standard, we can't wait to see them. And now we have 5 unique vampire dens that have been scattered across Skyrim. The author was disappointed with the lack of options for a hungry vampire and wanted a place to hide out inside of the main cities. So now we have new homes in Whiterun, Riften, Solitude, Markarth and Windhelm. And as the title suggests, they're all unique and fit into the style of the cities they're in. We aren't going to show you how to find the new dens because the author wanted the players to find the dens for themselves. Some are completely hidden and some hide in plain sight. But if you really don't want to hunt them down then you can find the locations in the spoiler section on the mod page. Each den has a variety of features in common, including a place to store items, a coffin to sleep in, and victims to eat. Some of the dens are also more intricate than others, with Whiterun being the most simple, which makes sense seeing as it will most likely be one of the first cities you'll explore. The mod does require Dawnguard and there's no prequest for the homes, which would be great to see as an optional update in the future. And altogether it makes for a nice collection of vampiric homes, and it's a great way to end today's bits and bobs. 
As always, an endorsement and favourite goes a long way for mud authors, so remember to do it if you enjoy their muds. Thanks to those that suggested this week's muds in the comments by PM or on Facebook, and thanks for watching.